Jolene Bunting is a former independent Belfast City Councillor from the Shankill Road, who describes herself as a loyalist and a patriot. See you later, honey. See you later. She has courted controversy by publicly claiming Islam incites terrorism. Her comments are being investigated by the Local Government Standards Commissioner. In 2017, she organised what she called an anti-terror rally at Belfast City Hall. It was a few months after the terror attacks in Manchester Arena and I knew that there was a lot of concern about terrorism on mainland UK. So I sent a mass email basically to anyone who had opposed terror and who was kind of high profile and was talking about the ter terrorism issue. Um, and Britain First were the ones that got back to me. At this event, Britain first announced it planned to focus more attention on Northern Ireland. Britain first has come to Northern Ireland and we're here to stay. For Queen and country, for Gordon Ulster, no surrender! After the rally, Jolene Bunting says she became involved with its plans to target support here. Jada had asked me to come in and help. I never said that I would join the party in any form, um, but I did want to help um, to, to, to make it a more legitimate political party and give voters a chance to actually see what their policies meant. With a then Belfast City Councillor on board, Britain First began to attract more attention here. But the question was, and still is, why has this far-right group been attempting to become more active in Northern Ireland. When you get to Northern Ireland, especially Belfast, it's almost overwhelming. For a patriot, it is paradise. There are flags everywhere. You can't fly a flag in England. Right? You've put a flag up in England, you're a racist. It does feel for me like the last stronghold for Britain. Back in 2017, it didn't take long for Britain First to start causing controversy here. Thank you for joining me. I am stood outside the Belfast. In December that year, Jada Franson and Jolene Bunting made this video outside the Belfast Islamic Centre. Support that. So that monstrosity behind me is a mosque. And the Islamic community here in Belfast is growing and it will continue to grow, then I suggest you get behind Britain first because we're going to be here campaigning against every single one of these dens of iniquity. Uh, we'll give you more updates shortly, God bless. A den of iniquity? Why did you say that? I believe Islamic centres are essentially their mosques. Dens of iniquity? Oh yes, yeah, dens of iniquity, yeah. But how? I mean, that's deeply offensive. That might be offensive to them, but we can't we can't see eye to eye on everything. What's it achieving, though? I mean, you're inciting hatred. No, no, I wasn't inciting hatred at all. I was given an opinion. I, was, I wasn't... There was no incitement at all. I wasn't standing outside there saying everybody throw bacon at this place. That would just be ridiculous. That would, that would be moronic. In late 2017, Paul Golding and Jada Franson were charged with making hate speeches at the Belfast City Hall rally. Three months later, in March 2018, they were both convicted in England and sent to prison for religiously aggravated harassment. Paul Golding and Jada Franson have been sentenced to four and a half months and nine months respectively. Despite the leader's prison terms, the party's plans to promote itself in Northern Ireland continued. It officially moved its UK headquarters to an address in the Shankill Road area of Belfast. And after he was released from jail, Golding began directing a series of so-called Days of Action, visiting many parts of Northern Ireland. Leaflet dropping in Port Rush, Londonderry, Newtonards, Porterdown and Lisburn, trying to recruit. We've spoken to many ex-members of Britain First, and we've seen evidence of violence and criminality in its ranks. Many who quit the party have raised concerns 
about the role of its so-called security unit, Britain First Defence, or BFD. At times, this unit has taken on an almost military look and has run training camps. This online footage also shows BFD members being coached by Golding in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wayne Cummings is the partner of Jolene Bunting and also from the Shankill Road. He became a BFD member when he attended what he calls a strange ceremony in early 2018, where he and other men had to swear an oath of allegiance to Golding. Britain First Defence, it's based on the Nazi SS, it's Paul Golding's personal army. That's what he wants it to be whenever I was stupid enough to be sworn into it. And you're standing there with a Union flag with your hand on a Bible and saying that you pledge your support to the leader of Britain first. At the beginning of this year, Jada Franson left Britain first. Jada Franson was at Wayne Cummings swearing in ceremony. She claims she was uncomfortable and didn't take part but neither did she walk away from the event. It reminds you of Oswald Mosley or fascists or, you know, black shirts or something. Well, I suppose ple pledging allegiance to an individual, I, I find it a bit, I, I find it all a bit cringe and a bit bizarre. I guess there is a fine line between this being concerning, like what's going on here, and then, just well, laughable. Um, but Golding's personal security unit isn't a laughing matter. Wayne Cummings says BFD members are also given a rule book they must follow. Paul produces this document, the, the BFD Black Book, and says this is a BFD Black Book. It's based on the IRA's Green Book, and that, that was how the meeting started off. Spotlight has obtained this copy of the Britain First Defence Black Book document. Written by Golding, it instructs members they must obey their leader at all times and without question. In it, Golding tells BFD members not to break the law, despite the fact he has criminal convictions. But he also instructs his men to never cooperate with police and to stick to a Mafia code of silence if arrested. Paul Golding has an interest in the history of loyalism, and some suggest he has modelled his own defence unit on loyalist paramilitaries. Scroll through his videos online, and there are multiple clips of him admiring things like loyalist paramilitary flags and pictures of loyalist murals. He's sending a message to people back in England and Scotland and Wales that somehow he's involved with these paramilitaries. The British far right, in the main, are huge admirers of loyalist paramilitaries. He thinks it's very, very important that people are under the impression that he has associations with loyalist paramilitaries. In the last 18 months, the Britain First Leader has recruited a number of men from Loyalist areas into BFD. He's targeted Loyalist communities with leaflet drops. And we are aware Golding has met with some Loyalist paramilitaries. But is this really fertile ground for Britain First? Despite his efforts to make connections with Loyalist paramilitaries, Spotlight has learned that several Loyalist factions in Belfast have made it clear to Golding they want nothing to do with him. We have also learned that several Loyalist groups have told Golding he's not welcome in Northern Ireland. Jada Franson says there is common ground between Britain First and Loyalism on issues like the Union, but believes Golding's attempts to tie in with Loyalism are misguided and dangerous. I'm proud to be loyal to my country. I'm also proud to be a Catholic. I'm proud, I'm a Christian above anything else, right? Of course you should be proud to be a loyalist, but for the loyalist community in Northern Ireland, which is an established community, I almost found it offensive for them. It's one thing to 
come and enjoy people's culture and embrace it. But there's another to hijack it. And I feel that there's a level of hijacking going on with, with Britain First. And it doesn't sit comfortably with me. During our investigation, we spoke with former party members who cited various reasons why they left Britain First, including the behaviour of members like Brown and Edge. One ex-associate of Paul Golding's in England agreed to speak to us, but only if we concealed his identity, because he said he had witnessed Golding being violent on several occasions on nights out, and he had fears for his safety. We agreed to disguise his identity, and his words are spoken by an actor. How would you describe Paul Golding as a person? What's he like? He's a typical narcissistic bully. People describe him as a street thug, which is a pretty good description. He is very, very violent. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Paul Golding! Paul Golding is a man who likes a fight. This is him in younger days in a lawful mixed martial arts contest. But in 2017, Golding was convicted of assault after headbutting a party member. And tonight, Spotlight can exclusively broadcast this CCTV footage of Golding on a night out in Belfast in December. The Britain First leader, in distinctive suit and tie, is seen arguing with, and then being grabbed by, another man who until recently was a member of the party. Golding responds with his fists. This is the leader of a UK political party that has publicly stated it is different to previous far-right groups because it has no desire for violence. He seems to think it's a place he can come and behave in a manner that isn't excusable anywhere else. He doesn't behave like a politician here. He behaves like a street thug. The picture we have built up of Paul Golding from those who know him is indeed that of a violent bully. But he continues to front a far-right political movement, which attracts a following and money. Because Britain First isn't just a party, it's also a business. Britain First brings in hundreds of thousands of pounds a year, mainly in donations. It does this by sending out emails looking for financial support. The emails were to play on people's heartstrings, using very emotive language. Just basically, every couple of lines in the email was asking for money. Were, I, I called them begging emails. Golding didn't like it when I called them begging emails, but that's what I called them. Every email had the, we need your money, we need your support. And that to me just felt wrong, completely wrong. <laughs> Britain First has channeled its income through a series of companies that have all been dissolved for failing to publish business accounts. It has, however, provided some accounts to the Electoral Commission. Ex-Britain First members have questioned whether these records declare all the money that the party has raised. For example, nowhere in these accounts does there appear to be any record of the income from Britain First merchandise which the organisation has been selling for six or seven years. Sources have led us to believe this may have brought in tens of thousands of pounds. Jada Franson says she left Britain first for a variety of reasons linked to Golding's behaviour, including concerns about how he handled money. The accounts make no reference to raising money from merchandise. Can that be right? That's not right. The party would have definitely been selling merchandise in that period. In February 2014, I joined, and within no time, I was wearing one of those wonderful green Chinese zip-up coats with the big Britain First logo. As early on as that, I know that we had... Britain First had merchandise. So why do you think the merchandise figures aren't in the accounts? 
I don't know why they're not in there. Paul Golding didn't respond to our questions about why merchandise sales were not declared in party accounts. Because of this, and because the party has also largely not filed company accounts, we are left with concerns that significant amounts of money could be unaccounted for. Then Spotlight obtained a secret recording made by a former Britain First member in late 2015 that raised more questions. We bring in about 360 grand a year. That recording was of interest to us because when Golding was claiming Britain First brought in about £360,000 that year, it didn't match or even generally fit with the party's own published accounts, which in 2015 declared its income as £183,327. So was the amount brought in actually much higher than it publicly declared? Much of what Britain First has involved itself in publicly and what lies just beneath its surface is deeply unpleasant. Until recently, at the heart of the party, was the relationship between Golding and his now former deputy, Jada Franson. Not long after Franson joined Britain First, the pair became a couple for a short time. When that ended, they remained in their professional partnership living in the same house. And many sources told us that both during and after their personal relationship, Golding violently abused Jada Franson on a regular basis. On one occasion, she actually rang me back in 2015, where he'd actually been abusive to her. She'd locked herself outside. She then kept the phone line on and we heard him throwing a bottle and verbal abuse at her as well. And... But these astonishing claims are more than just accusations. Because when we spoke to our source in England, we were passed another secret recording that proved it. What you're about to hear is one clip from a 40-minute secret recording that was made in late 2015. During the full 40 minutes, Jada Franson is talking to Paul Golding about the violent attacks he has been carrying out on her. Not once in the full 40 minutes does Paul Golding deny her repeated claims of the violent assaults. This morning's proof we can't live together. Because you're violent. Whatever, for whatever reason, we can't live together. So you can hit me and then tell me I've got to leave my home? No. What, what happened this morning, and you weren't, you weren't innocent. I didn't, oh. I didn't come near you. You fucking, you tried to come out, you tried to hit me, said you're going to kill me for well, a bottle understand. of drink at my face. Driving someone mentally crazy is just as bad as physical. As phys really? Yeah, no, everyone drives you crazy, so you beat them. The only That's two, your excuse. The only two girls I've laid a finger in my life is in you, and is an horrible In this particular clip, Paul Golding eventually admits he was indeed beating Jada Franson and that he had previously assaulted another woman. Jada Franson only reluctantly agreed to talk to Spotlight after we contacted her with our concerns about allegations of criminal behaviour in Britain first. When we heard the secret recording, we went back to her a second time and she agreed to another interview. We've spoken to around a dozen people who were members of Britain First who told us that you were being violently abused by Paul Golding. Is that true? Well, I don't, I don't see any reason why a dozen people would lie. Um. That's the leader of a political party violently attacking the deputy leader of a political party. How long did this go on for? Um. Five years? The whole time you were in Britain first? More or less. Well, maybe four and a half. Didn't take long to start and just on varying levels continue. We played her clips from the recording we obtained. It's quite embarrassing because I almost feel like I've let people down. 
Why? Who? Just, I don't know. Um, just such a stupid position to put and keep myself in and I don't know. There is personal animosity between Jolene Bunting and Golding, but she says she was aware of the violent abuse. I got chatting with Jada about it and she opened up and then I kind of says, look, I've been told that he, he grabbed you by the throat. And she, said, she confirmed that. And at that point, it just clicked with me. I thought, you know, this is a domestic abuse relationship. Jada Franson says Golding would punch and kick her and throw things at her. There were incidents that could have gone so badly wrong, like so badly wrong. I could have ended up really hurt or worse. And I just, and that, I guess that's where the fear came in because I thought I'm gonna end up dead. It is also claimed Golding routinely locked Jada Franson in her home, saying it was for her own protection. But sources who saw this believe it was really about controlling her. We've spoken to uh, a number of ex-members of Britain First. They also said there were times when they would go out and Paul would lock you in the house until they came back. Is that true? Yeah. This was my normality. This was my day-to-day -day existence was just complete control, I guess, or, or being controlled, I guess. Um, it was it was like I just accepted that that was what he was going to do that I couldn't if they went out and he'd lock me in the house she says she never went to the police about the assaults because she didn't want to damage the party I don't want to sit here and go into graphic detail and dish the dirt on everything that happened but there is also a a moral obligation just to anyone, male or female, involving themselves in Britain first with no idea that this is how the leader is conducting himself. Paul Golding didn't respond to the specific allegations of violent assaults on Jada Franson. His only response to the programme was that any libel or defamation will result in legal proceedings. Jada Franson now lives in Northern Ireland. This month, she was sentenced for hate speech offences in relation to the Belfast City Hall rally. Do you regret what you said? Do you have any remorse? No, I don't have any remorse. What I said was factual. Along with Britain First, there are at least half a dozen international far-right groups with active members here. But it is unclear what Paul Golding's next steps will be. Britain First aren't going to call it a day. Britain First is Paul Golden, and Paul Golden will flog and sell Paul Golden as much as he can. Paul Golding has been exposed as a violent man who is a danger even to his own party members. Britain First is itself a hateful organisation. Its links to Northern Ireland are at best an embarrassment and at worst a menace.